Good afternoon and welcome to the second concurrent session of the day, Hawk's Discovering Statistics and Data Software Demonstration. Our presenter today is Taylor Ireland with Hawk's Learning. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to enter those into the Q&A section at the bottom of the Zoom screen and we will address them at the end of the talk. We're also giving away three $25 Amazon gift cards at the end of the session. To enter for a chance to win, click the link in the chat to enter your name onto the prize wheel. And with that, I will hand it over to Taylor. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you to everybody that has joined us today. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen. So as she mentioned, we'll be walking through um, our statistics software for discovering statistics and data. However, we do also offer um, two other statistics titles that I'll mention today as well. So thanks for joining us. My name is Taylor Ireland. I'm an educational courser representative here at Hawks. Um, to start off with, I'd love to give a brief overview of some of the core pillars that we have here at Hawks, um, just overall as a company. So first off, I'd like to start off with our support and affordability. In terms of technical support, this is where we really shine. So um, as you'll notice, if you've come into the exhibit booth today, we're ready there um, to help you for immediate assistance. And that is um, also something that we do just in general for all schools that we work with. It is company policy to answer the phone within four rings. And the number that you call into the office with is the same number that your students use and that we would use um, from Hawks as well to call in for any assistance. So that is company policy, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time, um, Monday through Friday, and then extended hours at the beginning of the semester. We also offer a 24-7 live chat support option, which is great for those night owls that want to contact us, um, you know, at 1 a.m. when students are doing homework. And then in addition to that, we offer unlimited training and support. So at any point in time, whether it's during implementation or five years down the road with using Hawks, you have a designated training and support representative and entire team that's behind you to help you with anything that you need. Next up, I'd like to talk about our affordability. So we have a couple of different statistics titles um, that I wanted to point out. First of all, we have beginning statistics. We have integrated review versions of this and our discovering statistics and data title. And what I've included here are our net prices. So these are the direct to bookstore price. I want to clarify that this is not the direct to student price. Um, that's always going to vary depending on your bookstore markup, but the um, we do offer a direct from Hawks price as well that will run around 85.9 for the standalone title and then around 110 for the integrated review option. Um, so beginning statistics is our introductory level statistics title. And then um, at certain schools also discovering and st discovering statistics and data might be a better fit. So the table of contents does vary slightly for both of these, um, but they're both great options just depending on what topics you're covering. Right around the same pricing for these two titles. Um, and then lastly, we have a discovering business statistics text that um, is kind of more geared towards business courses. But overall, one thing that I really wanted to highlight is that we offer lifetime access for all of our titles. So if you have a um, series of statistics courses, as you can see in the business department, you might be able to use this one textbook across both, really um, making those cost savings for students even more significant. Um, the other core pillar here at Hawks is that we approach our lessons with a mastery based approach. So this is going to be very different than other mastery based systems that you might be familiar with. And I'll speak more to this as we get into the software, but overall um, mastery is super important and we combine that with adaptive remediation in our lessons to ensure that students are really held accountable for learning that material and um, going to be ultimately more successful on their later assessments within, within the course um, through our mastery based approach. Now, before jumping over to the student side of the software, the last thing that I did want to highlight are our, our um, LMS integration options. So we do integrate with all of the major learning management systems, but for a brief overview of what that entails, they all offer grade syncing and a student single sign-on access where they could click the Hawks Learning link. It would um, automate their account it, they would automatically get that account created and be given access to the course content on the first day. So we do provide students with temporary access 
Um, and we do also provide um, some deeper integration options with Canvas and Brightspace. But overall, this is something that all learning management system integration, um, that these are qualities of all of them that we offer. Now over to the student side of the software, um, I'll navigate into the platforms. So what I have pulled up is an example of our integrated review title, but also discovering statistics and data down here. As you can see, this is the main dashboard page of the student software. So when they click that single sign on link, um, they would be directed right here to this main page where they um, would be able to see all of the courses that they're enrolled in. Now, a couple of things that I want to highlight based off of what I shared in the PowerPoint slides are a couple of things up at the top here. So starting at the top left, students do have the ability to access their grades through the grades tab up here. So those would be accurate and up to date for anything that is automatically graded by the Hawk system. Secondly, we do offer an ebook through this ebooks tab that will launch open into a new window. However, we do have a more integrated ebook option that I'll speak to um, just in just a moment. You have some discussion board options here where you could open up a live chat to hold virtual office hours or even post a topic um, through, a dis through the discussion board for students to thread a response below. Over at the top right hand portion of the screen, um, we do have this alert system. So as you can see the red circle to the left, it works almost like your push notifications do on your phone, just letting the student know that they have a high priority assignment to complete. Anything due today, overdue or due tomorrow will show up here. Through the inboxing system right next to that, you would have the ability to message back and forth with your students. You can also set up automated assignment reminders. So maybe a day or two days before an assignment is due, if that student has not yet completed it, we'll automatically send that student a message to remind them to go into the platform and complete that before the due date. So it kind of takes that out of your hands um, as a good reminder that you can set up one time that works throughout the entire semester. Lastly, where the student's name would be in this drop down up at the top right, this is where students would be able to access our 24 seven live chat support. So again, when I say that our technical support is really where we shine, um, they have it right here in the main dashboard page to access right in the platform. So we're not hiding it. We make it really easy for students to find. And it's also on the main page of the instructor platform as well. We do you offer a training video and then lastly, um, just something fun is this give feedback when prizes option. As you'll notice throughout this demonstration, we genuinely take instructor and student feedback with all the features that we have. So students can actually let us know what they think about the platform, what's working well, what's a new idea that we could implement, and we take this feedback and um, we'll actually put that student into a drawing um, once a month for a gift card um, as a thank you for their time to provide us with that feedback. Now, I will start off in our integrated review title just because I wanted to share a little bit more about the formatting, but I will be demonstrating a lesson through our discovering statistics and data title. So with any integrated review option, what these offer is just additional prerequisite content um, that corresponds to the curriculum level content of the actual textbook. So I'll jump over to lessons and then into all right here to go to the table of contents. So as you can see, we have a chapter one point R integrated review that precedes the chapter one introduction to statistics section. So for every chapter within the beginning statistics or discovering statistics and data um, chapter, as you can see here, we have identified certain prerequisite skills and topics that the student needs to know in order to be successful in those chapter one um, lessons. So you could assign these in any order, whether you want it to be in a just in time format as we have it structured here, or if you wanted to front load all of the material at the beginning of the semester, or depending on how, um, if you teach co-requisites, those are structured. If students are doing these in the lab component at the same time that they're working through chapter one in the um, curriculum level class, you can kind of assign anything how you would like to and in whatever order that you would like to within Hawks. Another added benefit of the integrated review options are these strategies for academic success. 
So these are also um, assignable lessons. So if you wanted students to work through how to take notes in a math class, you could assign this as something that's due at the very beginning. So they are working on those skills before the, start, before the rest of um, the semester starts. So now I'll actually navigate back to the main dashboard page to jump into um, a lesson through discovering statistics and data. As you can see on this main page, we do offer that mini to do list right here. So we're showing the student what is of highest priority to complete and what's coming later within the course. This would be all lessons, quizzes or tests that you're assigning. Um, however, they also have the option to view the course to get a more comprehensive look at that to do list. So right off the bat, this to-do list um, is going to break out those lessons into a due today, due within a week, and due later format with those corresponding dates at the right-hand side of the page. One thing that I wanted to highlight, though, is that you can customize this list. Um, so if you wanted to break these headers out into units or modules or chapter one content, chapter two content, and so forth, you would also be able to organize those lessons in that way instead of by the date status. Another thing that I wanted to point out while we're here on this to-do list is that as you might notice, any lesson that you're not covering and you don't have assigned isn't going to pop up on this to-do list for the student. So if you're not covering lesson 5.3, they're not going to automatically see that assignment to go into. They would have to go into the lessons and the table of contents into chapter five to um, go and access that content. So it's really just what you've hand selected to cover within your course. Now for any one lesson, we'll go into 11.2b, testing a hypothesis about a population mean with sigma unknown. Any lesson through Hawks, whether it's statistics or any other math course, um, we always follow the same three mode learning path with learn, practice, and certify. So this just makes it easy for students to always know what to expect when they go into a homework assignment. And we have this recommended learning path to ultimately prepare them for that final mode of certify. Starting off in learn, this is where students will go to access that ebook content. So a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that we have um, the ebook to launch through that tab. Well, we integrate learn into the actual lesson because we want students to actually be more likely to access that content. So this is pulling directly from the textbook. A big benefit of learn is that it is completely accessible. So there are screen reader options, closed captioning for vi videos, and um, alternative text for images through the learn mode. And really what we've done is just break out the content into a more digestible interactive format. So I think the be biggest benefit of students using the learn mode over that ebook to reference the textbook is the fact that we get to integrate in these example level videos. So these are directly integrated um, into each learn page for the different examples that we have to offer. So for this example below, we'll actually have an instructor walking through the exact problem here. So for any student that needs a refresher of what was covered in class, or maybe this past year they were taking a fully asynchronous online course and really needed to walk through a specific type of question, they also have these videos to access. In addition to the example level videos, we'll also have watch up at the top left that will provide students with a lesson summary video. So not specific to a certain problem type, but specific to the entire lesson and all content that was being covered. One thing to note, as you see here, it says view more videos at Hawks TV. We offer a open source video library um, at Hawks TV where all of these videos are linked in one location. So you could always link that into your LMS for students to go and access all of the videos versus them coming back into each lesson to access these different examples. I'll click through a few other of these pages, but essentially the learn mode really just is a multimedia presentation of that textbook content. It is the rules, properties, definitions, all of those key concepts that they need to know to be successful within that homework assignment. So it's pulling straight from the textbook. One thing that I wanted to highlight um, is the ability for you to actually customize this learn mode completely. So if there is one part of this lesson that doesn't specifically align with your course curriculum, you could just hide that page from students being able to see it. You can replace it so that um, you can write over, use this page seven and write your own content here, 
or you can supplement this page with what we have down here at the bottom, the split screen window. So you're keeping that pre-created content up at the top and then adding in any of your own notes, videos, simulations. Um, you could even put in Google polls or surveys and get really creative. But as you can see, even these simulations are actually interactive um, through these added notes. And whenever you do replace an entire page, you can use any of these same options as well. If you do teach um, in any online course and really want to house all of your course content in one page, um, we do have some schools where instructors will actually upload their lecture videos into Learn, maybe on the first page. So really all of that content is in one exact place for the student. And overall, um, that's what I wanted to share within the learn mode. So it, it again is really just the textbook content, but we've integrated it within the lesson so that students are more likely to go in and reference that material, since we know that students oftentimes aren't really opening that traditional textbook anymore. The next mode that we have here is practice. So practice is where students will go to work on the exercises for this particular lesson. And this mode is completely penalty free and ungraded. So we really want this to be an opportunity for students to really just practice with the content. Just like you might do some exercises together in class where students are able to raise their hand and ask questions or make mistakes and learn why they made those mistakes. That's what our practice mode is here to do as well. So for this first question, I'll go ahead and answer this one. So I will do not equal to 397. And then for the alternative hypotheses, I will do again 397 as well. So as you can see, I'm opening up this keypad, but we do offer keyboard shortcuts for any student that needs those as well. When I go to submit my answer, I think this is one of the most beneficial features of um, our homework system for any student that is specifically in this practice mode is what happens when they do get something incorrect. So first, right off the bat, as you can see, we let them know that their answer was incorrect, but at Hawks, we take it one step further. We have this explain error option for the student to select, which is going to present them with the same exact question that they were just working on repeats what they had entered in and that it was incorrect so they could review it. And then we break it down element by element in this case. This is such a good example of where they went incorrect in answering this problem. We want the student to be able to learn from that mistake right as they're making it. So looking at some of this feedback, you can see here, you have used the sample mean rather than the hypothesized population mean. So now I know when I go back to reattempt this question, that I used the wrong mean here for the null and alternative hypotheses. And that's something that I'm going to want to check and um, re-enter in when I go back to that question. This is also really similar feedback to what you might share with your student if you were sitting next to them as they submitted this question. But ultimately, explain error is so valuable because students are working on these assignments outside of class, especially in the past year. They are doing this without you sitting right next to them, without you being in class or easily accessible in person. And so this feedback is so valuable so that they can learn from that mistake right as they make it and then go back to practice, correct that mistake so that when they see the similar type of question in the certify mode in the homework on a quiz or on a test, they now know um, what mistake was made. So it's, they're not going to repeat it. So they could click try similar down here at the bottom and just start completely over once they come back with new values for this question type. Um, on that note, we do offer up to 50 different versions of each type of question. So for this type of question here, it's going to be asking the student to essentially do the same thing, satisfy the same learning objective, but we'll have 50 different versions of that available. That's really to provide some variety um, for you and to limit any um, cheating between students or having them working on the same problems together. Students can also skip over any question um, if they wanted to go work on those that are just the more difficult ones within the practice mode. And then on the bottom left, we have two other options. The first one is this send to instructor. If a student gets to any question and just is having a really hard time with it, doesn't understand what it's asking, or is wanting to review this with you in class on Monday. 
they can take a screenshot of this question and send it to you through the internal messaging system where you can see that screenshot and then see what the student is asking so that you're basically better able to help and tailor maybe a review session for your students. The tutor option at the bottom left is going to break out any question into a step-by-step -step format. So for any student that just doesn't know where to start, oftentimes that first step can be the hardest. We want them to access that tutor if they need to, to get some more guidance on the exact question that they were working on. So we want to teach them to be critical thinkers. We don't want to give them a generic question so they learn how to just plug in numbers in certain locations. We want them to critically think and really understand what the tutor is helping them um, work through and how to get from point A to point B and work through that solution process so they understand how to do that in future questions. So right here, you can see that the tutor is interactive. They can answer in alongside it, or maybe as I mentioned, the first step is the hardest. They have this option down here at the bottom right to display that step answer, see what that is, and then go back to practice and continue working on this, or move forward to the next page and work through that entire process with the tutor. Tutor is really just there to help that student understand how to get to this solution. Now we have learn up at the top right that's still available. So instead of them having to jump all the way out of practice, they can go through learn. And they also have the ability to see a fully worked out and detailed solution. So our solutions manual is built right in to the question here. So for statistics, something that I did wanna mention is a lot of you might teach using different methodologies. Um, for questions where it's relevant, we do offer, which I'll get to in, uh, after we go through a lesson, we do offer technology instructions for Excel, SPSS, um, our Guru, R, all across the board. And for relevant questions where you might not be, or where students might not be solving it using the by hand method and instead using a calculator, we'll offer these use technology links through the tutor option and through solution that students can use to help them um, or take them to our technology instructions to use those to help them get to that solution in that way. And on that note, because they might be using different softwares to help them get to that answer, we have been we have done a lot of testing so that whether they were using a calculator, the table method or Excel to answer their question, all of those would be marked as correct with the answer tolerance that we have entered in. So that's all that I wanted to share in practice. So now that we have the last mode of certified to jump into, first I want to mention that learn and practice are truly just there to help prepare a student for certify. So out of the three modes, what's being graded and what, it, what the student is completing for this assignment for lesson 11.2b is the certify mode. So as I had mentioned at the beginning, we follow a mastery based approach to our lessons. So upon jumping into certify, what you'll notice is that it is exactly like practice. It's actually the exact same set of questions the student had already received and already worked on in the practice mode. We're just providing them with new versions of those same types of questions and now scrambling the order. But it's nothing new. They're not, you know, getting a brand new question that they've never seen before. The other thing you'll, you might have already noticed is that at the bottom portion of the screen, we have actually removed all of those learning aids that the student accessed in the practice mode. So this is where our mastery comes into play. We have removed all of those learning aids because we want your students to be held more accountable for really understanding and learning the material in the homework. You assign the homework for a reason. It's to help prepare them for the quiz or for that exam within your course. And what we found with some other systems is that students are given access to learning aids in the homework. A student might get on question one and they really don't know where to start off with. So they use the tutor to help them answer that question, get that green check mark and move on to the next one. But they never fully understood that first question. So they're using those aids almost as a crutch so that when they do get to a quiz or a test and those learning aids are removed and they no longer have a tutor option or the ability to just try a new version of that question, they're not performing at that same high level. So at Hawks, we really want to help students have those scores from the homework correlate and translate over to those quizzes and tests and ultimately better prepare your students for those higher stakes assignments. So as you can see here, within this lesson, we have 10 questions. 
the student is only asked to get 80% of these questions correct at our default 80% mastery level, and then they are rewarded fully with a 100% grade. Now, as you can see over here to the right, we have this heart meter with two strikes. So those are the amount of strikes or lives that the student has within the lesson. As you can see, you know, they can miss two, get that 80% with the 100%, earn that 100% grade, and then move forward into their next lesson that they need to complete. Now for any student that let's say skips over learn and practice, they go right into certify and don't, they don't understand the material. They miss that third question. The third, once they miss that third question, they're going to be automatically removed from the certify mode and placed back into practice with a customized set of questions based off of what they have missed. So now this is where that adaptive remediation component comes in. We are sending your student back and giving them questions specific to their areas of weakness. We're only asking them to remediate and review exactly what they don't know. Work on that, use the learning aids that we have provided, ask questions, go back in to learn, get all of that good information that they need. And then when they feel prepared, they can come back into certify and attempt um, the set again. And they have as many attempts and as much time as they need to master within the lessons. Ultimately, our approach with mastery is that we just want your students to continue working on it until they know it. And once that they prove that they know it at that 80% level, they're rewarded fully with that 100% grade. So every single one of your students can walk out of your class with a 100% grade, as long as they're willing to put in that effort. That 100% really helps that student see that it's the carrot at the end of the stick, so to speak. They always know that they can be rewarded as long as they're putting in that effort. Now, outside of certify, um, one thing that I that was mentioned to me by an instructor back in the fall to describe our three mode learning path in the online setting. I really love this and it really stuck with me. So as a brief synopsis of each one of these modes, you can look at learn as what students would be doing when they go to your lecture. This is where they're gathering that information. They're learning what a population mean is. Um, they're gathering all that information, watching videos, um, and all of the lecture material. Then practice is what you would be doing together in class. So they're given that opportunity to ask for help through the tutor. They can um, ask, they can receive help and feedback whenever they make a mistake. So these are the exercises that you all might go through. And then certify is still what they would go home to do for that homework assignment. So Hawks is really that complete learning system where we provide them with everything that they need all combined in this one three mode learning path in, a, in that singular lesson. Now, before moving forward into what our um, quizzing and testing platform looks like, I did wanna take some time to go over to our statistics um, companion site. So we offer specific links to each one of our, our titles and I'll actually go into the discovering statistics and data option. But those used technology links that I had mentioned are going to link to the technology instructions on this site. So if you are teaching a different method, um, those are here for students to access. What our companion site has to offer are free downloadable data sets. So some exercises in the textbook are going to reference some of these. They can be downloaded in Excel, CSV, and doc files. Um, some of these are pretty fun and relevant to students, beers and breweries, for example, or um, CO2 emissions. So we like to keep some up-to-date examples um, here. And then for those technology instructions, these are broken out either by chapter or as you can see by topic. So we have technology instructions for the calculator, Excel, Minitab, R, R Guru, which we just added in this past year, SPSS and JMP. Um, and, um, our guru is presenting at IES, so uh, if you haven't seen or heard about them, I highly encourage you to go learn more there. Um, but upon clicking on any one of these directions, this will just give you an idea of what is presented, but oftentimes you don't want student, you want students to be understanding the statistics and the concepts in general and not get bogged down by the technology that's being used. So these are a great resource to use so that you know students have all of the information that they need to be successful with implementing this into their technology or program um, so that they can make those right inferences at the end. 
What else we offer here on this statistics site are chapter projects. So we have these projects that correspond to every chapter within the title. I'll also open an example of this to kind of pull up for just a minute. But if you do more of a project based statistics course or just want to have some in class activity options that you give out as group work, these are another great option um, to have for your course. And all of those are also linked on our statistics website. And then we do have some other resources such as data visualization tools um, and so forth and some additional stuff that comes out of the book. But this is kind of chock full of um, information for you all. And this is something that we would be more than happy to share. It's another open source um, website that we have to offer. So we're just um, wanting to provide you with a lot of resources that you might need. Now back to the software, um, what I'll jump into next is the um, quizzing and testing platform. So it's going to look very similar to the lessons that we just went through. Um, on here, you'll see practice web test, and I'll share with you um, what that quizzing and testing platform looks like through this location. Um, so this is a really neat study tool that students have through web tests, practice web tests, and then you'll see this create practice web test option to select. So first off the bat, before I jump into this, I do want to mention that students can always recertify in any one of our lessons. So if the student has certified and then they have the midterm exam coming up and wanted to specifically go back into a certain lesson that they knew that they really struggled with, they're never blocked out from accessing that no matter what. We're never locking them out, even if it's past the due date and they never completed it in the first place, they can always go back and access that content because at any point in time, we want them to be able to do so. Taylor, I just want to give you a quick 10 minute warning. Um, we will just so that we can save some time for questions at the end. Sounds great, thanks Joanna. So with the practice web test tool, what the student would need to do is name this practice test. They'd be able to pull from any sections that they would like to. Let's say it's a unit exam. I could pull from multiple lessons here. And something that I forgot to mention that's actually very important is that you do have the ability to hand select the questions on all Hawks assignments. So our lessons are pre-created to just make it easy for you to assign it, what day you want to do of the semester and leave it at that. Or you can customize completely by adjusting the mastery percentage and hand selecting that curriculum. Once you hand select that curriculum, if the student is making their own practice test, it's only pulling from those questions that you've previously selected. So now we'll have four lessons over here to the right hand side. I want two questions per lesson, so we'll go for eight questions. And then for any student that does struggle with testing anxiety, they could even practice taking it in a timed environment. So if they know that they have an hour for this midterm, they could set the timer for 60 minutes and um, take that test and see if they finished everything within time. So upon starting this practice test, what you'll notice is that it's a very similar format and interface to what students are working with in practice and certify. However, the biggest difference is that they are no longer submitting question by question, but ultimately have these panels at the left and right to move back and forth, just like they would be able to on any actual paper and pencil assessment to go um, back and forth through the questions. So I will answer a few of these um, that I can very quickly, just to give us um, some results at the end here so I can move back and forth. I also have the option up at the top left in this drop down where the question is to hide those that I have answered to skip ahead to any that I have not completed yet. And then I will go ahead and submit this assignment. But the other thing to note is that the student can always hide the time if that ticking clock provides them with extra anxiety. But whenever I'm ready to go and submit my quiz, test, practice test, whatever online assessment outside of those lessons that you're giving the student, they have this submit assignment up at the top left. And one thing that I love is this dialogue box that pops open, whether or not the student did complete it or did not complete all the questions. So here you can see it says incomplete assignment. We don't want the student to accidentally submit something that where they did miss a question. So they have the option to cancel or yes, go ahead and submit my assignment. And they also have the dialogue box that opens. Are you sure you want to submit your assignment for grading, um, even if they did answer all of the questions. So it's just that 
marker and check for students to be able to go back and review their questions one more time. So we'll submit that answer or submit that assignment, excuse me. And what you see down here is that I did extremely well on this practice test for guessing these questions. Um, these um, down here at the bottom show the students exactly in what lessons they got questions correct versus incorrect. So the incorrect is marked by red. And so as you could see, maybe I got all questions in 3.1 wrong. The benefit of the practice test is that students would be able to click directly into this bar graph for 3.1 to be taken to a set of questions specific to what they had missed on that practice test. So this is again, kind of where that adaptive remediation comes into play on their own tests that they take and create themselves. They are only being sent to review exactly six questions based off of what I, in this example, didn't answer, but didn't know, so that I can specifically review this, access the tutor, see explain error if I'm still getting these questions incorrect, and really just hone in and practice on exactly my specific area of weakness. I can also exit practice here, and the student, if you had it turned on for regular tests, would be able to um, review that exact test by selecting review, so they would be able to see that they got this answer correct, or moving forward, um, if the answer was incorrect, they could open the tutor here and then um, go and review their assignment in that way. All right, and this is about the four minute warning. So if you want to wrap up and we can jump into the questions after that. Sounds great. So I'll end this review and go back. Um, so they could take the same exact practice test an unlimited, unlimited amount of time. So maybe they went through and, um, and this would also apply if you had certain settings set up as the instructor. Um, if you're interested in taking a look at more of the instructor settings behind customizing all of these assignments, I will be presenting on that tomorrow. So make sure to stop by again. Um, but for all of these, they have unlimited attempts at their own practice test once it's been created. So maybe they went and practiced a specific lesson or two, retook or reviewed their um, practice test, and now they wanna come back and start all over and see if they improved their score. They absolutely have that opportunity to do so. So really all in all, our platform is set up to provide your students with all of the resources that they might need to complete these assignments You know, when you're unavailable, which Sometimes they complete stuff in the middle of the night and you want them to be able to get that help. We can provide that help to them through the way that our lessons are set up and through our mastery based approach. Um, they also have unlimited practice opportunities through those assignments, through the practice mode and also through the practice web test um, feature. And so that's really all that I wanted to um, share. Joanna, if you want to go ahead and get started with q and I'm happy to answer any questions that have come up so far. Sure, so before we get started with questions, I did wanna just give a quick reminder to everyone that the link to enter one of the three $25 Amazon gift cards is available in the chat. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to enter your name in to win. And we will be spinning that prize wheel right after the Q&A. All right, so we have just a few questions here in the Q&A. Um, one of those questions is, do the projects have answer sheets available for instructors? That's a great question. I believe that we do not because a lot of them are more subjective or could have multiple answers to them. However, that is something that we could follow up with you on with a more concrete 100% answer. Um, so Joanna, if you wouldn't mind grabbing their name, we'd be able to follow up with you. Um, a little bit better about that. Sure, and um, it looks like I just got a message here. We do have some of the chapter projects, um, if not all of the or the answers. Like you said, there are some cases where there are some chapter reviews that are more open-ended with a lot of yeah. um, room for interpretation on the student's end, but for the ones with concrete answers, we do have those, it looks like. Perfect. Thanks, All right, and then we have another question here. Are the technology questions auto graded or instructor graded? So all questions throughout the platform that we have available in our question bank are all automatically graded by our system. However, you do have the option of um, using our question builder tool where you can create some more open ended questions in case you'd be interested in hand grading those yourself. 
All right, and let's see what else we have here. So we also have a question here that says, do you offer any simulations or applets in your statistics courseware? Great question. We do. Um, so we do have certain lessons through the software that do provide simulations um, through the learn mode that they can, they're kind of data visualization tools and games. Um, and I'll show you where those are in the table of contents. So I'll go to all. We have these appendix chapters through our statistics titles where those simulations are held. So we have um, games of chance, type two errors. So some of these to play around with um, in case you're ever interested in learning more about those different simulations. One thing that I will note, um, just because I know accessibility is um, such a big question, these simulations lessons are not accessible. Um, so if you do have students or if you need to keep that in mind, I recommend not assigning them as a grade necessarily, but something just extra for students to go and access. All right, perfect. Well, that is all the time we have for questions right now. Um, if you do have any additional questions, do feel free to stop by the Hawks virtual booth. That'll be the best way to get the most immediate answers to any remaining questions um, and speaking to one of our members of the Hawks team there. Um, Taylor, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing all that valuable information.